It's a nearly 100 kilowatt hour all-terrain tank track battery. This is gonna be fun. If a Tesla and an M1 Abrams had a baby, it would be this thing. What do you think? That's a big battery. Even though 100 kilowatt hours is enough to power the average American home for a few days, the power tank won't be enough to power the administrative trailers at the pit unless we can harvest some electricity from the sun to keep it perpetually filled up, which is where the factory comes in. As the closest American-made factory to the Utah Salt Flats, we have to design and manufacture a 14 kilowatt solar array that can withstand 80 mile per hour winds, and we only have a few days to do it. Technology has progressed so quickly in the manufacturing space that I don't think people realize how fast we can make things domestically. For this particular tube laser, I walked next door to Oshkut, who knocks this kind of stuff out in a day for anyone who needs stuff really quick. So instead of us drilling and notching every single frame component, the laser does it all for us within seconds. As long as we have a computer file that the laser can read. What's crazy is that even though welding takes an extreme amount of power, this battery, the power tank, is overkill since it can power about 10 welders all welding at the same time. You can run a factory off of this thing. The power tank can output 22,000 watts at a time, which is about the same as an entire house meaning it's got three 240 volt plugs, four 110 volt plugs, and could technically charge up your smartphone about 6,000 times. We'll need to bolt the exterior I-beams to the frame on site, so we're welding some nuts onto the inside of a steel plate. Then welding that plate to the end of the top tube of the solar frame. It'll be pretty amazing if this all comes together correctly on our first try. The powder coating process also surprisingly requires electricity. The powder coat itself has the consistency of powdered sugar and gets statically adhered to the metal before getting cooked in an oven to solidify that thick protective top coat. The hardest part of this project is that we are trying to assemble 14 kilowatts worth of solar out in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of things that have to line up just perfectly for us to get this right on our first try. All right, we skipped a few steps because the sun is going down, but we do have four panels up on the rack already. I'm not gonna show how we got them up because um, that's not a good, good thing to do. The power tank can be charged with a normal 240 volt plug, but since we're gonna be miles away from the nearest wall outlet, we're gonna max out the 12 kilowatts of solar instead. At least now we know the solar panels work. The, uh, they are facing the wrong direction though, and it is a little cloudy outside, so we're not 100% sure both arrays are gonna be functional, but that is a problem for us to figure out at the salt flats. 